So uh, my name is Anthony Grappito. I'm 24 years old and from Lake Orion. And currently, um, I visit about 200 schools around the country every year within a school assembly program called the Magic of Hope. Um, it didn't always start that way. When I was in high school, I started to develop this program inside of my magic show and to develop this kind of talk for those who saw it. It's a suicide prevention and coping skills assembly, but I use magic instead of a PowerPoint. When I was getting out of high school, every organization, every school, and every single place that I went to went, ha, that, that, we don't need that here. What, what are you talking about? Because maybe I didn't have really a track record. So naturally, I got in a Ford Focus with my best friend, and I went to Las Vegas, and I started to street perform and do the exact same presentation that you saw just on the side of the street, living out of a Ford Focus and collecting tips. And this went on for a very long time. I went from Denver, Colorado to Vegas. I got eaten alive on Venice Beach and ran into a street gang that kicked my butt. <laughs> and um, then we had to go back to Vegas and eventually home because I went broke. When I got home, I had apparently caught the attention of a couple newspapers, and Common Ground saw that I was an inpatient there, and they reached out to me and they said, hey, we want you to start speaking uh, for us to raise funds. And I said, okay, cool. That's where I met Tony Rothschild, who passed away about a year, uh, year ago yesterday. And um, he really coached and mentored me. Originally, what I wanted to do was be a magician who had a giant platform, and then I would use that platform to talk to my audience about mental health, like I've seen other entertainers do. But he told me that I needed to mix messaging together, and that's what I need to do for the rest of my life, and it would reward me, and he could not have been more right. I really miss him. As you can see here now, that actually is uh, at Roseville Middle School last week. Um, that is on the right side of my presentation. I try to break down a lot of the barriers that come with it, which I'll talk about in a minute. I provide all of my own equipment. Most schools have these terrible, terrible overhead speakers that don't work, the microphones don't work, the students are not into it. And for those of you who study theater, when it comes from the stage, it's a lot more attentive and it's a lot more rhetoric if it's just coming from around the room, especially when it's middle school and high school students, people who aren't, you know, who they, they have to go to the assembly. So my presentation curriculum uses magic in storytelling to share facts and statistics about mental illnesses and suicide, to identify mental health and wellness tools, healthy coping behaviors and unhealthy coping behaviors, how to end cyberbullying, my personal story of survival, recovery, and hope, and then uh, the power of words, which is uh, where abracadabra comes in. For those of you who weren't at the presentation, abracadabra means what I speak is what I create, and I go very far into how externally and internally the words that you speak outwards and inwards are so important. My objectives, afterwards the classes, um, I provide a lot of the tools for this, but sometimes the schools like to take it on their own. The objectives is after the presentation, you'll be able to list three symptoms related to depression, identify two healthy coping strategies related to depression, be able to describe two potential, two potential effects of cyberbullying, and you will experience the positive effects of magic on purpose. A lot of people forget that magic has been around one of the oldest art forms that we have, even before writing. And it has had such an amazing power and influence in politics and health and wellness in every single factor of our lives. Oop, there we go. Now, responses. Um, and I about four years ago is when I really started kicking off this assembly program, and I've received over 500 uh, just private messages from students and from teachers. I wanted to read a couple of them to you, and there's a couple different ones. Some of them are really nice, like this one. Hi, I go to Kingsley High School and saw you this morning. I couldn't stop to talk to you in person, but I wanted you to know that I really appreciate you coming to talk to everyone today and sharing your story. I've been going to therapy for almost three years for anxiety and depression, but I've had these problems since sixth grade when I got cyberbullied. I found your presentation amazing, inspiring, and it really spoke to me. And on the other side, we have a teacher. I just want to give you some feedback from the speaker that came yesterday. They sent this to the school principal. I wanted you to know that I think that it was a wonderful thing he came to talk to our students. Depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation are horrible realities that our kids face today. The deal with the challenge is much different than when I was a child. Many kids don't grow up learning any coping skills either. So thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing in the speaker. My children are from different ages, and they all had great takeaways from his presentation. They all enjoyed the magic, but even more so, they were able to tell me the connections he made with his feelings. 
this age group is hard to reach, and I think what he is doing is amazing. And she talks about how cool I am for a couple of bits, so skip on that. But then we get um, into something a little more serious. I get nice messages with thank yous. I get questions related to self-harm, suicide, and the ones that I won't show you here today, this is about as close as I'll get to it. I actually get students, uh, even today I got one, saying, I am self-harming, or I have a plan to kill myself. And I, from there, I work with the school. Uh, a lot of the time, it's the counselor slash therapist inside the school. And they handle it directly, because I, that is out of my control, especially when I'm not even in the same state. Hey, it's the girl in the yellow from Lamphere. I just want to thank you for coming to our school, talking to us about your journey through self-harm and how mental health should be taken seriously. I've struggled with it for a while, and hearing your story means a lot. I'm now getting help after hearing you yesterday. So thank you for coming to our school, and don't ever stop talking about it. I found out later when I talked to this girl that she had a really bad self-harm issue, and she wasn't getting any help, and none of her friends knew, and now she's doing really, really great. This is another one. This is from Kingsley High School. Um, I can't say this enough. Thank you so, so much. Our school really needed this. I personally needed this. Since March, I lost four people to suicide, and one was just last night. I gave this presentation in April, I believe. One was the night before I came to the school, and that's happened on more than one occasion. I've also known people who have attempted. I guess this helps uh, me understand what people go through and that we all need a little help, and that's okay. This is where we get... <clears throat> A little bit of a difference. On the left side, I just kind of want to skip down. Your story really hit hard, and so did a lot of the things you said. The moment that those chains dropped from around you was when it hit that others do, do know how I feel, and me just thinking I'm alone in this world isn't how I should feel. So thank you so much for that. Um, that's a student saying, I now know I'm not alone, because sharing stories of hope and survival really do something. And as you guys said, you don't have to be uh, you don't have to be, you know, a doctor. You don't have to have a degree to do these things. You just have to care. On the right side, um, <clears throat> this is where I actually followed up with a student, and uh, he was able to share with me, uh, kind of intervening with the counselor. I don't want to go. I'm timed. So, But he said, hey, I just want to thank you for coming to my school. Just hearing your story really made me realize the things I have been doing in my life to help with certain things and realizing that they aren't going to help me long term and they're just temporary fixes. Come to find out he was using drugs and alcohol to cope and to deal with his uh, stressful environment at home. And he is no longer doing that, so I'm told. The presentation, for some reason that's over there, I don't know what happened there. The presentation um, goes at a lot of schools, conferences, obviously, fundraisers. I do a lot of fundraisers. Air bases. For those of you who don't know, more airmen die by suicide than any other enemy on the planet. We lose more of our airmen that take their own life than anything else on the entire planet. I got to speak at Selfridge Air Base in December to the entire base, and they are not allowed to talk about, they can't have depression, they can't have anxiety. You cannot have, you cannot be bipolar. If you share that, you get an honorable discharge. Ask a single airman that's active. I've also been on radio shows, uh, the sc schools and et cetera, but the presentation is designed for any audience who wants to have fun and who wants to learn. And it really does mean a lot to me. Uh, so this is my calling. I took religion out of it, although um, I, you know, I do look up to, I have a relationship with God. And um, <clears throat> I, I believe that I've been called to heal people from suffering. And I think that all of us here today can relate to that. That is why you're here, to help people who are suffering. I've also been called to help people transcend mental health stigma, and that's the reason I use magic. To create environments where mental wellness thrives. Apparently, uh, my calling was at air bases and schools, because that's primarily what I do. To bring joy and laughter to others, and of course, to lead by example. 